Hi and welcome. This video will show you how you can use Clapier as a Google Form alternative for adding dependent dropdowns or nested dropdowns to your forms. Although Google Forms is a common choice for making simple forms, if you need to have dropdowns that are dependent on the selection of an option from another dropdown, then Clapier offers a simple solution for this. Let's see how to do this with the help of an example. Over here, I have created an app earlier for site inspection where a survey inspector makes a site visit and captures all the details in this app. Now, in this app, I would also like to capture the area and site location of their inspection. So, let's see how to add this. I will go to the design app where we can edit the app. You can also see all the earlier fields. I will then click on add field and then click on drop down. This drop down block is very useful for users to select an option from a list of options. You can configure this block on the right hand panel over here. There are two options, basic and advanced for configuring. The first thing I will do is to change the label into area. Under options, I will list the various areas to select from. So it could be area 1, 2 and 3. Keeping in mind that the options are mentioned one after the other and that there are no spaces after each option. You can also give a description to the field. This is usually to help a user to know what to input into a field or it could be some helpful information for them. Over here, I will just type in, please select the correct area. When I click on save, you can see the description appears at the bottom of the field. You can also mark this field as required. So if you want a user to necessarily make a selection in this field, you can enable this. When I click on save, you can see that this field is now denoted with a red star mark. First, we will see how a regular drop down works in the app. So I will go to app home, where the app is live and ready to use. When I scroll down, we can see the area drop down field. If I do not make a selection and I simply click on submit, you can see an error message has appeared. That is because we have marked this field as required. And you can see the areas that I have listed. Now, if an area has multiple sites to them, for example, if area 1 has sites 1, 2, and 3, or area 2 has sites 4, 5, 6, and if you select an area, you would like to view that area sites only. For this, we can have a nested drop down. So I'll go back to the design app, click on add field, and click on drop down again. I will change the label to site. Now, under options, I will not be able to simply mention the sites. For area 1, I cannot mention sites 1, 2, 3 and then for area 2, sites 4, 5, 6, it will be slightly different. For example, if I am typing in site 1 for area 1, then it will be typed in as area 1, parallel bars, site 1. The parallel bars ensure dependency. Similarly, I can mention site 2 and 3 for area 1. Again, keeping in mind that they are mentioned one after the other with no spaces after each option. And similarly, I can do this for area 2 having sites 4, 5 and 6. For this particular example, I will not keep any site location for area 3. Next, we go to the advanced option and to ensure dependency, we have dependency fields. When I click on level 1 dependency, I will have to select area. That is because the site is dependent on the area selection. However, if I were to leave this blank, then in the app, the options will be listed as such. So let's see how that looks like. I'll go to app home. When I scroll down, you can see the site drop down has appeared in the app. When I click on this, you can see the options that I had listed in the design app has appeared as it is, which is not what we want. If you only want the corresponding sites for the area selection to appear, then you will have to select the dependency field. So I'll go back to the design app and under the advanced option, I'll click on the level 1 dependency and select area. If you have multiple levels of dependency, you can keep clicking on add another level. For example, if you have countries, states, cities, and they all depend on each other, then you can use this for multiple dependency. Next, we can also allow multiple selections. As you saw earlier, I was only able to make a single selection. So if you want to have multiple selections in your dropdown, you can enable this option. Now that I have added the dependency, I will go back to app home. Now when I click on site, you can see nothing happens. But if I were to click on area and say I select area 3, Still, I will not get any option for the site. But if I were to select area 1 or 2 and then click on site, you can see the corresponding site locations for area 1. And now I can also select multiple options. Let's see further configurations. Next, we have display this field if. Over here, you will be able to implement logic and conditions to your app, just like spreadsheets. But in place of cell numbers, we have the concept of variable names, which you can find at the top of every field in brackets. Let's take an example for this. In this app, if the type is selected as on-site, 
then I would not like the area field to show up in the app. But if the type is selected as offsite, only then would I like the area field to appear in the app. To implement such display conditions, I will first click on this field, go to the advanced option and under display this field if, I will type in at the rate type equals to offsite. This will ensure the display condition in the app. So let's see how this looks. I'll save this, go to app home and now over here you will notice that the area drop down has disappeared. If I select type as on site, nothing happens but if I select type as off site, then the area drop down appears. Similarly, you can give such display conditions for the site drop down as well. For example, if only area 1 or 2 is selected, since they have site locations, then only would I like the site drop down to appear in the app. But since area 3 does not have a site location, I do not need this to appear for it. So I'll go back to the design app. Click on site field on the right hand panel under advanced option and under display this field if I will type in or and in brackets at the rate area equals to area 1 comma at the rate area equals to area 2. So this means that if area 1 or area 2 is selected only then will the site field appear in the app and this is using the or logic. I'll save this and now let's look at how the nested drop down works in the app. I'll go back to app home. As you can see, both the area and the site drop downs have now disappeared from the app. Once I select type as off site, only the area drop down appears. And if I were to select area 3, nothing happens. But if I were to select either area 1 or area 2, then the site drop down appears along with the corresponding site locations. You can also see that now I can make multiple selections over here. Now that we have seen how nested drop downs work and how to implement display conditions for them, I will go ahead and fill in the details of this app really quickly. I have filled in most of the details in this app. Now I'll go ahead and click on submit. You can view all your submissions under the submissions tab and any submission that you have, once you click on it, a right hand panel will appear capturing all the details submitted by a user. Now over here when I select on site or area, you can see that I am able to make changes to these options. After submission, if I do not want any changes to be made by any user, we can have such configurations as well. So I'll go back to design app for the site field and under advanced category. Over here you can see the option that says allow value to be changed after initial submission. If you disable this option, you will not be able to make any changes to a submission. I'll click on save and go back to the submissions tab. I'll scroll down and you can see the site drop down has now been grayed out and I will not be able to make any changes to this particular field. Similarly, you can also do this for all the other fields as well. Now the nested drop downs also work in the mobile app as well. All you have to do is download the Clapier app either on Play Store or App Store and the moment you create or edit your app, you'll be able to use it on the mobile app as well instantly. So let's see how that looks like. Over here you can see the mobile screen with the Clapier app downloaded on it. So I'll go ahead and click on the Clapier app and then click on site inspection. You can see that the app is live and ready to use. When I scroll down, you will notice that the area and site drop down fields have not appeared in this app. When I select type as off site, scroll down, you can see the area field has appeared. Once I make a selection, say area 1, then the site field appears along with the corresponding sites. Now I'll go ahead and fill in the details in this app really quickly. Now I click on submit. You can also view all your submissions in the mobile app as well by clicking on view submissions. You can see our previous submission made in the web version has appeared here as well. To see all the details of the submission, you can simply click on any submission and then view all the details over here as well. Even over here, you will not be able to make any changes to the site field as we have configured it as so. Now back in the web version, if I refresh this submission, you can see the submission made from the mobile app has also appeared over here. So in this way, you can configure your dependent dropdowns and use it for both the web version as well as the mobile app. If you have any queries regarding the configuration of dependent dropdowns or any other feature in Clapier, you can always request support by clicking on the button over here or you can email us directly to support at clapier.com and we'll be happy to assist you. Thank you.